the cowboy, symbol of American manhood, the most common, most successful male image of our times. We've all grown up with him. He's the classic model of what a man should be. What are the characteristics of the Marlboro Man? His hat, his horse, the leather, and the look in his eyes. Distant, self-assured, aloof, and unapproachable. He rides with confidence, a strong sense of himself, a strong sense of his power. Winston's Marlboro Man. His hat is a hard hat. He straddles a dam, the same self-assuredness and sense of dominance. As if to say, this is my world. I'll taste it all. Nobody does it better. These men lead exciting, adventurous lives, like fighting the ocean and logging trees or riding the range at sunset. They discover satisfaction at exotic places all over the world. The major theme that runs through all of these images is that the cowboy is cold, distant, and alone. One Canadian stands alone. What happens when two Marlboro men get together? Is the man on the left about to lynch the man on the right? The cowboy is portrayed as a threatening person. Smile when you say Dan Post. He is a man who could go either way. A potential killer or a violent hero who can save the day. Cowboy images can be used to sell anything. Of course all you men shave with your hats on. The cowboy can be stripped down to sell French underwear or dressed up trading in his horse for a Porsche to sell cologne. And here's the ultimate cowboy. He knows how to wear his diamonds. What else does advertising tell us that a man should be? He's a winner, fresh, confident, and cool. He drinks the best because he is the best, a real winner, a real CC man. This man is a tuxedoed cowboy with a cigarette pistol. He is hostile and he dominates other men. Does a man have to be a wild, roaring beast? Must he be fiercely masculine? What could make a man cry? Has this man ever cried? Is he alive or has he been retouched into existence? Is a man only a reflection of what he serves and drinks? Only what he wears and how he looks? And what he reads? in cold blood. Is this what makes a grown man cry? Then there's the idea of men and success. Success as presented in women's magazines is this. For five days we wined and dined at the finest restaurants. Now I had to cook my man his first meal at home. Glad I had success rice. Success for a woman is pleasing her man. Success for a man is presented quite differently. If you're on a beeline to the boardroom, you should look like you know where you're going. And how do we get to the boardroom? Hard work. Hard work, commitment, and devotion to the job. And fierce competition with other men. To be recognized. And to achieve excellence. Finally, the successful man climbs to the top of the ladder. At the top, the work may not get easier, but the rewards get better, like living well. Living well is the best revenge. Revenge? Revenge for what? What has been done to us that needs to be avenged? Could we men have been badly hurt during the struggle to succeed? So we made it. We worked hard fought our way to success, wealth, and the best cigars that money can buy. And we expect people to serve us. 
At first glance, this ad for TWA and Newsweek seems okay. The ad agency is just showing us what happens at the airport. But to use the stereotypes of a woman and a black man waiting on a white male executive is a reflection of the racism and sexism in society. Finally, total control. Does he look free? Is that a throne or an electric chair? Is he a pharaoh or a prisoner? Do you sense the confusion and double messages in this image? One place where images of male power are often seen are in advertisements that depict the military. How to conduct business in the tradition of the Admiralty. From the perimeters of the Empire comes a collection of beautifully woven fabrics tailored into suits which project an unmistakable air of authority. An unmistakable air of authority brought to you by the Southwick Cloth Collection. More unmistakable authority symbolized by the American Eagle in tweeds from Macy's or in a uniform from the Marine Corps. They sure are a tough team to be on the wrong side of. Are you man enough to handle this drink, Metaxa, for gods and warriors? Often, our heroes are shown as powerful men who have become dictators like Napoleon and the Tsar. In this age when legends lived, the Tsar stood like a giant among men. He could bend an iron bar over his bare knee, crush a silver ruble in his fist. He had a thirst for life like no other man alive. Could any man live up to this image? Of course, we can't all be Tsars. Most of us have to settle for being a father in the little kingdom of our home. Give Dad the most comfortable seat in the house. On Father's Day, this ad reminds us to thank our fathers for teaching us. Friendship, partnership, courtship, sportsmanship, citizenship, leadership, and one-upsmanship. We need to thank him for paying the bills. But a good father knows how to protect his investment. These traditions of what a man must be are passed on from granddad to grandson. Carry it on, son. The traditions of what a man should be are created early in childhood. Self-image, it's created early. We learn how to be cowboys as soon as we're big enough to wear a hat and some leather. We learn to admire and emulate fierce-looking sports heroes. This is an ad from TV Guide. This is the same ad in Ebony magazine. Black sports heroes can be just as mean looking. Why did they use the same blonde boy in both ads? Ben Friedman here also watches TV. He's 59 pounds of raw courage held together by Levi jeans. He's tough all right, and he's only six years old. In a few years, he might trade in his football for a cigar, his helmet for a briefcase, his tire for a suite on the 39th floor and his faithful sidekick for a wife and family. What's going on here? Poor Freddy, stuck with a cold bologna and cheese while his friend Bobby has a hot, hearty manwich. One ups boy ship. Dad is a winner. Junior also learns to be a winner. Notice the hand crushing down on the other boy. Dad works hard to get to the top. Junior learns this too. So we practice our lessons and try as hard as we can to be Dinah kids, so that we can, someday, grow up to be wealthy supermen. There are also positive images of men in advertising. Here is a picture of an older man. He wears glasses. He does ordinary things. He is open, friendly, approachable, and expressive. Men are sometimes shown as loving and affectionate, as gentle, caring, and sensitive people. This is an ad from a woman's magazine. It shows a man with his baby daughter. But when you look in men's magazines for that same kind of relationship, you find images like this. They both look uncomfortable. Another part of us that shows up frequently in advertisements is our bodies. 
and what is a man's body? First, muscles. This ad is trying to sell designer jeans. Notice how little of the picture is actually used to show us the jeans. What is the real product that they're selling? Even while relaxing, this man's body is filled with tension. It's an ideal state to develop early heart disease, but at least the muscles are taut. And then, of course, there's Mr. Universe. Comparable to Miss Universe, the most beautiful woman in the world, he is the ideal man with the ideal male body. Macho muscoil is mucho macho. This man reeks of testosterone. He's more than just a body with muscles. He's sexy. A few bare inches of smooth, supple, shape-showing maleness. What's for sale here? Yes, there is more to a man's body. Like buns. Fashion begins here. A tiny pouch front. Look closely and you'll see where fashion begins. Let your eyes focus to the center of the next photograph. Bullseye! Bullseye again. Everybody's getting into Cotler's pants. In France, a man's masculinity is reflected in his individuality. And where is a man's individuality? Is it between his legs? Note also that women's underwear is often sold in the shape of eggs. Men's underwear, however, is sold in the shape of a penis. Many other things are sold in penis-shaped containers. Have a real ball with rollerball by Brute. It is usually impossible to show a real penis in advertising, so they show us vegetables instead. The hugger condom is for smaller men, so they say. Not really for smaller men, but for smaller penises. Here is an ad for cigarettes. What size do you think his cucumber is? And he's coming alive with pleasure. Finally, the carrot. Long, straight, solid, and wet. And with the words, come for the biggest incentive of all. The clothing industry also exhibits this phallic confusion. The master stroke. Notice where the ties originate. This ad, subtle at first, has as the center of attention the rod that is between his legs. Now some might challenge us, say that we're reading too much into these ads. Take a good look at this next ad. Look how big OJ's third leg is. One for the record books. So there it is. The product may be deodorant, cologne, cigarettes, or commercial property in Maryland. It's there. Look for penises the next time you're reading Time or Newsweek. Many ads show men as adventurous and romantic. Joel is adventure, as every man should be. Joel has a smaller third leg than OJ, but it's getting lots of attention. And while showing off, he might as well kill a monster or two. Here is a man's fantasy to be seduced by a beautiful woman in the Garden of Eden. Another man's adventure fantasy. While doing a little cat burglaring, he's interrupted. The perfume is too powerful for him. His masculinity is too powerful for her. A man should be trained and skilled for high-class romance, as well as having the money to pay for it. We don't even have to be clever with words are capable of expressing our feelings. Diamonds can say it for us. So we fly across the universe to sweep the lady off of her feet and waltz her into designer sheets. There's another subtle implication we found here. In the middle of the ad, dead center, is a photograph of a man. He may be her brother or father or her son, but he certainly is not the dancing man.
How do men learn to relate to women? Here's an ad from the telephone company. Funny stage they're at. George is older, but doesn't quite measure up to kid sister Shirley. It's a stage, consoles dad. You'll outgrow it. As children, we are taught that boys are inherently superior to girls. As we grow up, we learn to appreciate women from a distance. These two boys are admiring the good shape Jill's in. Notice which part of her shape they are admiring. We have a success story to share about this ad. Community groups protested to the Jordan Marsh department store management, who apologized and withdrew the ad campaign. Ads like this from women's magazines help teach men and women about ogling. Men learn to do it, and women learn to accept it and believe it's okay. This ad is filled with hidden implications. The sinister-looking shadow on the bus. Balanced position of the woman. The unreal nature of whistling through a bus window. And the words used to describe Breck's formula. Deep. Penetrating. We are taught that girl watching is expected of men at the beach, in the office, on the street, by older men at the club, and younger men at the opera. No matter where we are, no matter who we're with. At some point, men stop the whistling, break through the bus window, and develop real relationships with women. What happens when men get close to women? The VO mood appears, uncaring, distant, rise above the commonplace, aloof, mistrusting, or else men are busy getting close, seducing her with sardines or smoking papers. This ad is filled with symbols of bondage, the cord around her leg, the bars across her body. She is completely off balance. What will happen next? Does this man collect shoes for trophies? Why not? She'll probably love it. We found images that either suggest or graphically show violence by men toward women. Look at the man in the mirror. The man's shoe on her body. She's running away from something. Do it with your shoes on. A traveling man should keep his hat on. Never know when you need to make a fast getaway. Sometimes the woman is not even shown, but a double meaning seems to be there. Open her up and hear what she'll do. Indeed, open her up and hear what she'll do. A man should leave his mark. Love, made for each other. Some images leave nothing to the imagination. Here's an ad in a printer's trade journal. And all this just to sell us some ink. And finally, look at this sequence from the Sunday New York Times magazine. Furthering man's oldest profession, hunting. The next week we found this. The prey is caught. On the third week, the kill. So here we have it over a three-week period in the Sunday New York Times, one of the most respected newspapers in America, the stalking and murder of a woman by a man. Why not? She'll probably love it. So we come back to the original question, what is a man? Are men born and bred to be toughies? Threatening, unapproachable, fiercely competitive, always struggling to become and stay first class? Is a man just a super shape, perfect body, surrounded by other perfect bodies? Remember, these are just advertising images. 
reflections of an artist, a photographer, a studio. They are mostly models and makeup and only represent a small piece of the reality. We are the real people and we can choose. My daddy told me to act like a man And his daddy told him to Neither one of them knew what that meant to the women That they were acting on and They didn't know that they were doing their own sons wrong Well, act like a man, what the hell does that mean? Suppress your emotions, ignore your dreams Act out the ugly roles you see on TV Take what you want, fight for what you can't take Never cry, never show pain You've got to be brave, find yourself a lover And make her your slave You've got to get it up, keep it up Go, 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 be the world's greatest lover Let everybody know Impress, impress, you've got to be the best You've got to show the world you're tough You've got to be a success My daddy told me, son, you've got to act like a man you told me to and told him to be the one of them knew what that meant to the women that they were acting on and they didn't know that they were doing their own sons wrong the world told me don't act like a girl don't look like a girl don't play with the girl so they might say you're a girl you've got to be masculine you've got to be tough if you act like a sissy life's gonna be rough girls can be weak but you must be strong you've got to learn to fight or you won't last long you gotta build up your muscles learn to hit throw and run play baseball and football be just like your dad where he'll sit and watch television all day long drink beer smoke cigarettes and brutalize your mom she does the women's work he does the men's work he's got a good job and she stays home remember god is a man the president's a man the mayor Governor, senator, congressmen, policemen, army men, doctors, lawyers, pilots, sailors, judges, and ministers. But if you're a woman, you gotta find yourself a man so you can be a housewife and a mother for him. My daddy told me to act like a man. His daddy told him to. Neither one of them knew what that meant to the people. But now we know. Hey, brother.